Welcome to Diving into Deep Learning for Biomedical Data Analysis, produced by the University of Arkansas, with support from the Arkansas INBRE, IDEA Network of Biomedical Research Excellence, UAMS, the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, and the Arkansas Integrative Metabolic Research Center. Data analysis is an important tool for engineering and life sciences. Data analysis for biomedical engineering is important for identifying biologically relevant patterns that might be hidden within the data. There are many established tools for multidimensional analysis, but the patterns that those identify might contain some kind of bias. And there may be more complex biological pathways that are not well known or understood. Therefore, we want to use some more advanced data analysis tools to objectively identify complex patterns that could be hidden within the data. This figure contains images of different cell types that require years of training to identify, and even then the identification is still prone to human error. This identification could be handled by a computer in a more objective way. Advanced data analysis tools use artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is the simulation of human intelligence by computers. There are many subsets of AI, including computer vision and machine learning. Deep learning is a subset of AI that utilizes a neural network to identify and classify complex patterns within multidimensional data, for example, images or database records. Neural networks have two phases, a training phase in which they incrementally learn patterns from a large collection of training data, and a prediction phase in which the learned patterns are applied to new data. There are many mainstream uses of deep learning neural networks. ChatGPT is a question and answer based neural network. DAL E2 is a text to image neural network, and on the right you can see a sample input and the sample output of this system. And also our home assistants, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, etc., are natural language processing based neural networks. And also, of course, self driving cars, where they use computer vision and route planning to navigate through the scene. And to the right, you can see a picture of what those neural networks process. Deep learning is a cutting edge technique used in biomedical data analysis. It's a versatile tool, and biomedical engineering has applied deep learning to many different areas, including cancer detection, cell and tissue segmentation, particle tracking, and bioinformatics. To the right, we see an image of a network architecture that can be used to detect cancerous sites in thin sections of tissue. Beneath that, there's a pair of images, an input image and an annotated bottom image, of a wound site in a thin tissue section. There are many deep learning tools. These might be in the form of free and paid software packages, or just add-ons to existing uh, programming languages like Python, such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. In this module, you'll learn about generating a neural network, manipulating a data set to train a neural network, applying the trained network to a new data set, and quantifying its performance. The figure contains input images on the left and corresponding segmented images on the right. This network was trained using an add-on to ImageJ, a free image analysis program from the NIH. This diagram provides an overview of the module's organizational structure. You will use biomedical image data stored in the cloud, as well as two public data sets, MedMNIST and the Kaggle breast cancer data. You will interact with a Vertex AI workbench, and during the module, you will use a variety of Python packages, including Torch, TorchVision, NumPy, sklearn, Pandas, and several others. This module will introduce you to deep learning and explore its use for biomedical data sets. The module is divided into four submodules, each in a Jupyter notebook, which are contained on the Google Console Cloud platform. The submodules are classification, augmentation, segmentation, and regression. Each submodule includes motivation for why to use that particular method 
and code chunks to set up a different type of neural network, train that network on a biological data set. Key scientific concepts are discussed along the way, and there are knowledge checks, exercises, and challenges in each submodule to further test your understanding. So how can you get the most out of this module? There are multiple activities available for understanding deep learning concepts. Each submodule has code chunks that you can run and you can follow along as it walks the user through each section. You can answer the knowledge checks within each submodule to identify the key concepts. You can dive into the code and complete exercises, and you can modify and write new code to improve the neural networks within each submodule to complete challenges. The first submodule is classification. Convolutional neural networks, CNNs, are a powerful deep learning tool that allows for classification of images based on features contained within the image. For more complex network architectures, pre-trained models are available and they can be fine-tuned using transfer learning. In this submodule, a specific CNN architecture called ResNet is created from scratch and trained on the PATH MNIST dataset. PATH MNIST contains pathological images or images of thin sections of colorectal cancer. In addition, a pre-trained version of ResNet is also used to classify the same data set and then the network is fine-tuned via transfer learning. And finally, the accuracy of each model is compared to determine the best model for this application. Submodule 2 is augmentation. Although CNNs are very powerful tools for detecting features and images, image transformation such as rotation will cause a decrease in prediction accuracy. Sometimes there's not enough training data to cover all these variations. To increase robustness, networks can be trained on augmented data sets that have additional images created in them from the originals using scaling, rotation, cropping, etc. In this submodule, multiple ResNet CNNs are trained using the breast MNIST dataset. We use the unmodified dataset, an augmented dataset, and the unmodified and augmented datasets combined. The network accuracy from each type of dataset is then compared. Submodule 3 is segmentation. Typical CNNs output a single classification for an entire input image, which is not ideal for images that contain instances of multiple classes distributed spatially. In this case, we need to use a special type of CNN architecture that is used to produce a pixelized classification map, a process called segmentation, for the input image. In this submodule, UNET CNN is used to segment images of skin into classification maps based on the surrounding signal. The accuracy of the network is measured and the classification maps produced by the trained network are visualized. Submodule 4, our final submodule, is regression. Classification is a powerful tool for biomedical image analysis. By default, CNNs output category labels for input images, which may not be as fine-grained as needed. CNNs can also be trained to output continuous values by switching the training regime from classification to regression. In this submodule, a simple regression model is trained on the tabular breast cancer dataset. The trained model is then used to predict a continuous cancer radius value based on multiple features within the data. I would like to acknowledge all the contributors to this project, University of Arkansas Medical Sciences, the University of Arkansas, Arkansas Inbray, and the Arkansas Integrative Metabolic Research Center. This project was supported by the National Institute of Health, Google, and Deloitte.